Okay, remember that they're changing my voice. Keep in mind that I've been enduring racial harassment here in California, um, in the Santa Clara County area, for years. Okay, and I have 23 witnesses and lots of um, video evidence that is evidence is called like a I believe it's called corroborating evidence that corroborates my story, right? And you can see that there's a lot of stuff that when combined shows a pattern of harassment in a sort of subtle way. And some of the stuff, you know, when you look at the witness testimony, it's it's direct testimony of various components of the harassment. And the harassment has different forms, and one of the forms is racial. Okay. So we see these sort of, you know, military-grade psychological operations that are occurring. Um, people who are involved um, by their former or current military personnel. It's not entirely clear. I think one time uh, I came across several military personnel that were enclosed, so the evidence shows that, that that's the case there. And then there's helicopters and stuff like this. Okay. So to make a long story short, some of the evidence might be a little harder to believe than others. It might seem like just a coincidence, but w the sum total um, package of evidence makes it clear that there's an organized racial harassment uh, event taking place and people are ignoring it. And speaking of that, it brings me to this story in the news that I just saw today, where in New York, um, these black females were f playing basketball uh, in a game and they were harassed, right? There's barking noises and what have you. We have no reason to believe that they made this up. I mean, their coach um, canceled the game in the fourth quarter, right? They quote unquote forfeited the game due to this excessive racial harassment. And notice that, you know, they didn't reschedule the game, right? They just forfeited the game according to the news, right? So why didn't the referee stop the game temporarily? Okay, and eject the people from the crowd who are doing it. Why didn't the the school do anything about it? Why why were why was the audience putting up with it? Why was the school you know where they're playing? I'm I'm assuming it's a school that they played the game at, right? Why did they put up with it? Why did the other players put up with it? Why wasn't there a kind of united stance against it? Because society tolerates various forms of evil and harassment. They're so used to turning a blind eye to gang stalking and harassment and organized harassment and group harassment that nobody did anything about it. They just canceled the game and went home. They had to, they had to call the news. And because of the particular political affiliation, I'd imagine, of you know the people in the news and the exact way that they came at them, they decided to cover the story. You know, they're not covering my story because it's not good for any of the political parties and their agendas. And we can see that there's agendas in the news. And of course, they don't want the corporate partners who are involved in organized harassment to crack down on them. It's clear when you look at this country that people of color need to get together. They need to turn state's evidence. They work for the police and military. And I'm I don't think they're going to do that, but that's what they need to do. They need to secure uh, a massive lawsuit against the federal government, the cities, uh, the state government, what have you, the corporations, and they need to start their own region. I do not believe that people of color will be treated fairly here in America. I think there should be several regions, one a multicultural region, one all black, uh, other regions for other races who want their own racial region as well. Me personally, I'd live in the multicultural region. I'm not a black supremacist. I'm a moral supremacist. And I've said that many, many times. Okay. But when you see this, 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 this kind of racist warfare always aimed at black people, why is it always black people? It's always black people, so to speak, who get shot by police. It's always black people who get harassed in this particular way. OK. And then some people say, well, they're the only ones complaining about it. Well, if we look at the history of the Klan and who they hung, you think they hung other people of color as often as black people? No. OK. Is there the brown faces and native faces and, and Asian faces or is it black faces? So it's very sad that people don't have the manhood and they weren't raised correctly enough to tell the truth about this because they're jealous of black people. And there's a lot of white people and people who are mixed with white who, within their respective minorities, um, try to cause division. They try to say, hey, if you highlight that black people are the most stigmatized group, okay, that you're helping them somehow. How are you helping them? 
Okay, if you don't highlight it, you're not telling the truth, and that's causing division amongst minorities. Can you imagine if black people said to Native Americans, hey, that they don't think that the Native American genocide took place? Can you imagine if they said to Mexicans they don't think that, you know, there's there's trouble at the border and that there's any Hispanics there, there's only magically it's only people from other groups? So if you don't tell the truth, that's gonna piss somebody off. Everyone knows that black people are the most persecuted. So when white people come out and say, well, you know, uh, stop making it about race, fuck you mean stop making it about race. Race is part of the problem. That's like 9 million people starving to death in the world say, don't make it about starvation. Make it about just the white man's problems. You can go to hell with that bitch-ass fucking argument. That is some bitch shit. And your parents should be very ashamed of you. Okay, so now, do any of you wonder why I felt the need to say it that way? Do you think I was wrong to say it that way? We see in the Bible, it says in Proverbs 119, that all who go after ill-gotten gains lose their souls, right? It takes away the life, a.k.a. the soul, from all who get them. We see in Proverbs 9, it says the realm of the dead is where people who pursue ill-gotten gains goes. It says, you know, folly's an unruly woman, okay? And she says stolen water is sweet, food eaten secret magically is delicious, but little did they know, right? Little do, do her and her companions know that they're in the realm of the dead. They're soulless fools in the realm of the dead. You see, in Proverbs, it says God weighs the motives. Also, it says God weighs the heart. And as water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. So we see that people are not only disgracing themselves and their families and their nations and their religions, etc., etc., by doing what they're doing, but they're also going to hell. Why would you want to live a pitiful life in complete disgrace and then go to hell? What was the problem in Revelation? Why did, why did the, the plagues keep coming? Why did they keep coming in full force? Because they went after ill-gotten gains. You know, all sin is a variation of theft and stealing, right? And ill-gotten gains go hand in hand. So Revelation 9.20 says, The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons. And someone is a devil, right? Anyone who sins is a devil. That's what the Bible's getting at, I believe, in 1 John. Anyone who sins is a devil. The reason why the Son of Man came was to destroy the devil's work. If your righteousness does not pass that of the Pharisees, you don't go to heaven. So if you're not righteous, you don't obey the commands, right? John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands. The greatest commandment is loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and your being. You have to love the Father and the Son at the same time. We see in John uh, 14 again, verse 23, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will, and we will make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Okay. So, as we see the, the truth here of this situation, do you win when you play stupid about the evils in your country? No. Okay. You should get that firmly from these from what I've said already. So we look at Matthew 5, where it talks about you know, the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, what have you. It says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you have to be persecuted, and you have to be righteous. For those of you who don't believe that, we go down to verse 20. It says, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So we see people are forming into groups where they play stupid about things, where they do the, the bidding of really it's the government, right? They say the deep state, but it, you know, it's basically the government. It's so commonplace. It's not something that's happening behind the scenes and no one knows about. It's something that's in your face everywhere you go. You see their behaviors. You see their cultures. You see their style. Okay, this deep state, in a sense, is the underworld. And now it's here. It's everywhere you see. It's everywhere you look. Okay, the changes in policy, the changes in behavior, the changes in dating, right? Climate change has the word mate in it. Okay, they're basically threatening people in what, you know, with, with various consequences would have to do with not being able to support yourself when this, these changes in the weather and so on um, occur for whatever reason. And speaking of that, 
okay? They are changing my body structure. They are fuming and poisoning me and changing my testosterone levels. So it reduces my muscle tone and it causes me to kind of have a little bit of a hunchback effect, right? My spine is like, it's like it's sitting in a slightly different location. It's the muscles around it, something like this. I don't have it down to a science, but they've changed my body structure. Okay, you can still tell that at one point I was the top martial I mean, I'm top martial arts ever either way, right? You can still tell that I have a superior body structure, but it's changed in a way that seems like a gay person. Look at gay athletes, they tend to have a certain way about them. Certain body structure, especially if they're from Greco-Roman, you know, fraternities, right? And then in college frats, they have a certain kind of, you know, form. Some of the people in the English uh, have a certain have this kind of form, right? It's this kind of. It's hard to explain what it is, right? If you watch the movie, um, I guess the movie's called Achilles with Brad Pitt, right? Look at he, how he's shaped. Look at his face. It's kind of a gayish way about him. If you look at the old statues of Greece and Rome, you'll have a little bit more uh, of an idea. But it's really this common gay athlete shape that they're trying to create. And they've changed, you know, they've changed how much flesh sits on the bone structure of my face to where my face looks a little bit thinner. Okay. And beware of people trying to use this to try to pretend that they're me when they're not. It even says in the Bible that many will come in my name. Okay. I've proven that I'm the idea that Christ is superimposed on. And there's a lot of people who are very immature, very uneducated in society. The types of people who don't ask questions, type of people who don't say, what do you base that on? Type of people who answer before listening, like the Bible warns you against. Okay? Who won't bother to hear my argument, try to oversimplify. Some will know that I'm the idea Christ is superimposed on. Some of them know that very well. But they'll play stupid. In fact, this video probably, you know, probably would have gotten maybe 10 views if I didn't bring up the part about Christ. Now I'll probably get five views. No matter what topic I cover, why am I not getting a lot of views? I put a lot of tags in there. I cover shootings. I cover controversial stories in the news. And so obviously the overwhelming amount of evidence shows us that I'm persecuted. They're covertly editing my pictures. They're changing the look of my pictures, they're changing the look of my video images, how I look in my videos, they're fuming and poisoning me, changing my voice, even changed the way my facial uh, structure looks, they've messed up my eyesight in recent years, caused, made it so I have to wear glasses, they've done a lot to kind of throw off um, how I look, but they made it obvious that they're doing so, and we see things like this to some degree in the, in the bigger society, but just like with racism, you know, poor white people have certain problems, but poor people of color have worse problems, okay? Uh, poor black people and black people in general during the civil rights movement had certain problems and people who were um, you know not doing what the government wanted had more problems okay uh, people who were civil rights activists even if they were controlled opposition had more problems so in my case I'm not controlled opposition and you know they've tried to make it seem like uh, they, they try to make a lot of things you know I just got fumed pretty bad but they try to confuse things okay now, I do not have a brain disorder. A lot of people in the governing class do. You know, for example, you know, European governing class, they're the inbre uh, they're, they're said to be inbred, right? The, the, the quote unquote royals, and that caused brain disorders. And they bred a lot of people, a lot of mistresses, and they were very much active in breeding during colonialism. So you see all these people claim to be related to the royals. A lot of them are probably telling the truth because they certainly breed it unfairly and in large amounts, and they have a certain brain disorder, and they're trying to make it seem like, you know, it's normal or something. Okay. Um, just because you have a brain disorder doesn't mean you should ruin everybody's brain on the planet to try to see my deal. I mean, that, that's pretty immature, it's pretty pathetic. And it. So what they get from that is that they have evil genes. Not just having a brain disorder, and some people don't care if people have brain disorders, some people do. But anyone with sense cares that if you have evil genes, right? And they've made it clear that not only they, but the people in their social clubs and secret societies, they're more often than not related to them have these genes that allow them to just abuse and plunder and, and play stupid and just 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 ruin the whole world. And that's part of why the people who wrote the Bible wrote it. They said these these the kings of the earth, right? The beast is like a beast. It's like a, 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 ma a formation of people that are like animals that just completely cheat everybody and say, look up to me. Yes, look up to me right away. Yes, I, I punish them if they don't. Right. They have this some kind of narcissistic kind of genetic disorder, you know, that after my flesh is gone, can't be cured. And no matter what, people shouldn't reproduce.